I didn't do it with like a plan in mind. When I launched it, I wasn't thinking that it was a thing that was going to allow me to quit my job and become a successful SEO consultant and entrepreneur. Today's episode, I sat down with Steve Todd, who is an SEO consultant and the founder of SEO Notebooks and SEO IRL. Plus, he will be one of the guest speakers at the Chiang Mai SEO conference this fall. Steve had become very successful in his SEO newsletter that has over 16,000 subscribers and his remarkable case studies at FreshBooks where he generated over 50,000 organic search visits per day. Yep, you heard it right. But I let him tell you his story. So let's get into the episode. I'm probably best known as the founder of SEO Notebook, which is email newsletter just containing one actionable piece of strategy per week. There's no news in the newsletter. It's just literally like one thing you can go out and try regarding SEO. I'm coming up on my four year anniversary in a couple of weeks, which is super exciting. Published every week. I uh, haven't missed one week in four years. And uh, the list is up to almost 16,000 subscribers now. So I've grown pretty organic and it just is a perfect avenue for me to you know share my love of SEO especially with all the AI stuff that has gone on in the last six or seven months uh, it's really breathed a lot of new life into the list it really inspired me to just keep on providing as much value as I can prior to starting SEO notebook and starting my own SEO consultancy I was uh, the SEO manager at FreshBooks uh, where we grew the traffic to 50,000 visitors per day and ranked number one for keywords like invoice template that had a significant impact on FreshBooks's business with a search volume of 300,000 per month so I have a lot of experience in that regard and just, you know, all things SEO I'm super passionate about. So happy to be on the podcast. Thank you so much for this very detailed introduction. And I don't know, it, it's so inspiring because I remember the first time like, oh, I would just stumbled upon your LinkedIn and then I immediately followed and each time I just, you open my LinkedIn and there's value bomb. And how did you start SEO notebooks? I mean, now it's a super, super popular platform. How did it come to your mind to start that? Yeah, great question. So I think, um, you know, like a lot of things that are really successful, they come out of necessity. And personally, I have so many ideas like all the time like that's one of my it's a blessing and a curse because literally like sometimes I'm awake at two in the morning jotting down ideas that I have when I'm trying to sleep this idea for SEO notebook came in two parts in two days uh, I was having an idea uh, to try something at work the next day when I was working at FreshBooks and I thought man, I really need like one place to put all of my, um, you know, things that I want to try, things I want to test, things that I want to research, etc. And I thought, hey, well, you know what, if I just get Evernote and put everything in a separate page, I can review those at the end of the week or the end of the month, and then, you know, try to um, action those different things. I did, I immediately got Evernote that night. And then the next night when I was, you know, trying to fall asleep again, I thought, well, what, what, I, you know, I already had a couple of pages in my notebook already. And I said, well, what, what would happen if I um, took one page of the, this notebook every week and just emailed it out to people who had subscribed to my list? And I thought it was a really good idea. And the next day I um, went to my boss at FreshBooks, a guy named Chris Cisco, who I really admire. It's almost like, like a mentor to me. I just went up to him and I said, I have this idea for SEO notebook it's going to be one page per week and he was like that's cool you should do that and then I just went over to my computer and bought the domain for $750 which is seonotebook.com I didn't really know what to expect but prior to that I was like really active in some of the Facebook SEO communities uh, when it came time to launch my own thing I had the support of the people who I had been supporting for you know a couple of years without much expectations in return and uh, yeah that's kind of how it was born just out of necessity really you know it's been hugely valuable to me with you know the work that I do with my clients and on my own sites uh, because each of those notes are like a mini SOP right so I can just now draw upon um, four years of over 200 notes and uh, different things that I can sort of try. So yeah, that's what I've been doing the last four years. And that's kind of how it was born. I love this. And when you when we met in Texas, and you really told me like, oh, if I start this podcast, then you take it seriously to like uh, publish every week, which I always think about you when I publish every week, like, okay, 
check mark. I, I got the same advice about that. Yeah, as, which is what I told you. Like if you don't publish every week, people are going to forget who you are. So that consistency has a compounding effect. And, um, you know, people expect to see me every Tuesday at 930. There was one time where I misscheduled the post and I was like getting emails be like, where's the email where Steve what happened? <laughs> you know? That's fantastic. How did you uh, get your first thousand email subscribers? Because a lot of website owners, a lot of businesses do want to build an email list, but they they'll probably don't get that many as you did for sure. Prior to starting the actual email list, I, like I mentioned, I was pretty active in some of the Facebook groups for uh, SEO, primarily SEO Signals Lab. Uh, as a place that I was frequenting since around 2017. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I just shared my own value in that group. I always did my best to help people um, in that group. If they had questions, you know, I'd be the person giving like way too much time and, 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 and providing answers and just showcasing my, my knowledge for people there. You know, inevitably, I, I added a bunch of people as my friends on Facebook as well. And when it came time to launch my SEO notebook, I had already a reputation um, in those communities uh, for being somebody who is knowledgeable and, and helping people. When yeah, it came time to start it, um, I just got a lot of initial support. My whole goal at the time was just to get 100 subscribers and then launch. So I did that pretty easily. The idea itself was, you know, unique. So people could jump on that and, and sort of like understand this was a little bit different than just like a roundup newsletter. When I hit 1000, it was probably around two months after I launched SEO Notebook. There's, you know, Kyle Roof told me that like once you get like a, about a thousand people, you know, following you, um, there becomes like a sort of compounding um, effect where your list will grow naturally. And uh, I think by the time um, I went to Chiang Mai SEO that year, which was probably four to five months later, I was up to 2000 subscribers. And then, um, yeah, to, to today, four years later, almost 16,000. Super incredible. And just a quick question is that what platform do you use for emails? If uh, anybody new <laughs> listening? Um, I use email octopus, but I don't know if I would recommend it to be honest. Like the only reason why we subscribe to it is that it was the only form we could hook up to Divi at the time, which is okay. what I built my first, <laughs> first mm -hmm. site on. Just like I, I just wanted to do something super fast. So it's deliverability is very good. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's user friendliness is the best. And the SEO notebooks right now is on Notion, which is also a project mm -hmm. management tool and also like a note taking app. Yeah. So at some point I switched. That was a great move. I love Notion. It's super easy. It's just fast. It's versatile. It's, it's a really great platform for me personally, just to quickly drop these notes and, uh, you know, make edits at the last minute and kind of stuff like that. Yeah, uh, same. I love Notion too. All right. And uh, let's move on a little bit further from SEO career to like your your latest SEO conference, actually, that was taking place in Toronto. First of all, congratulations. Oh, but my best friend was there. <laughs> I was really rooting for her to, to go say up, uh, say hi to you, but I don't think she did. Anyway, was that, was, um, was, that was that Tran? No, it was a uh, Tang, I think. Yeah, sorry. Yes, because uh, I, I, I spoke to um, somebody who sort of befriended her. Um, there it was actually my partner who kind of became besties for a night <laughs> there okay so um, yeah she was telling me about it and I saw that uh, that you posted that yeah. yeah I didn't know that you guys were best friends well the small the world is really small so <laughs> yeah for sure I was like I just saw you in Austin yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so how was uh, SEO in real life or IRL? So the, the domain, if anyone's interested, is seoirl.com. And that's uh, basically a one night social slash educational um, evening. And um, this is the second time we hosted it in Toronto it was just this past May. Basically, the format is a bit of socializing at the beginning, dinner, sorry, not dinner, but like hors d'oeuvres and, and drinks. And then uh, we have uh, several speakers 
um, that night and uh, then followed by more networking and socializing. So it, it's going to take place in Toronto twice a year in the spring and in the fall. And uh, we had over 120 people um, come out the second time, pretty much doubled. Yeah, it's just a really good night. There was people, you know, flying in from Mexico, Vancouver, New York, Ohio, um, a lot of different uh, places, which really surprised me that, that people would travel all that way just for one night. But it just goes to show you how much people love SEO. Now we had um, some really great sponsors like Surfer, Ahrefs, Search Intelligence. And if anybody's uh, interested in coming, just go to seoirl.com, sign up for the new updates, notify you when the next event is going to be sometime in the fall. Fantastic. And, you know, I know that when you said like SEOs, it really shows how much people love SEO, but at Kind of, there is another side of the coin where like SEOs tend to be like the most introverted people in the digital marketing space, or maybe PPC guys and girls too. I don't know. But <laughs> um, well, how did you come up with an idea like, okay, we should have a conference when you kind of push everybody out from their natural comfort zone? Was, was it difficult to to do that? Uh, well, personally, I'm also very introverted, so I fall into that um, realm as well. But I think what separates, um, you know, the what what really allows a lot of SEOs to you know come together, despite um, that possible tendency between a lot of us, is our love of SEO, right? So you know that when you speak to an introvert, if you speak to something that's interesting about them, they can you know they'll be very comfortable and talk the whole night, probably more than an extrovert. So it's really about that common thread that brings us all together. And you know, for me, it was just something that I realized that I could probably do like I could probably be the person in Toronto to bring everybody together and I felt since I had that ability it's a responsibility that I should do because um, you know it's a really great thing for the community the feedback has been fantastic we had speakers fly in as well for the last one you know just I'm really blessed to be able to be part of this community to be the person who brings it together Never thought I would be in that position in my whole life. But um, since I am, um, I've got to keep it going. Yes. I love when you highlighted like, oh, it's my responsibility too, because that shows um, how much you care for the community and inevitably people will care about you too. A lot of people don't kind of realize that once you're responsible and you act like it, uh, good things will come to you. <laughs> yes. Well, it's just like, um, it's just like SEO notebook. I I didn't do it with like a plan in mind, you know, um, when I launched it, I wasn't thinking that um, it was a thing that was going to allow me to quit my job and, um, you know, become a successful SEO consultant and entrepreneur. Uh, it wasn't um, any of those like motives that drove me to start the list. And it's the same thing with SEO IRL. You know, I'm sure that, you know, over time, as more people come to the event and the event grows larger, sure, I might get a couple of clients out of it or whatever, but, or partnerships or, or whatnot. And, you know, that, but that's not the driving force. And, you know, my own marketing strategy is really not very heavy handed at all. It's not like go hire Steve. It's more just like, you know, here's the, their value that I bring and it's up to you to kind of see that. Um, over time. And then, you know, contact me if, if you feel like um, we, we could work together. So um, that's pretty much my own philosophy is really just like, give the value first and, um, you know, show your passion. And uh, if you're able to sort of scale um, the way that you give, then you increase your likelihood for sort of, uh, you know, having you benefit from that. And really, I just look at it as like, you know, I'm planting seeds around all the time, like, you know, trying to help people help people at scale, you know, many of those seeds blossom and uh, become relationships um, where, you know, we're, we're helping each other. Now that uh, you mentioned that you were able to quit your job, which is like a lot of people kind of dream about, right? Like to, to go on their way. Uh, how was that journey for you? to go from agency to become a consultant? Well, actually I, I did, I spent a lot of time at agencies, but my last stint was actually in-house at FreshBooks. So um, that was my best job I've ever had, apart from being an entrepreneur, but best, like actual job I had working for somebody else. You know, at the time 
uh, we were becoming really successful um, at FreshBooks with um, the rankings that we were achieving on invoice templates, and then later the um, uh, traffic that we just exploded um, on our resource hub, where we hit 50,000 uh, visitors per day. Um, and, uh, you know, as we were becoming more successful, I just naturally developed more confidence in myself, which I think is pretty natural if you are having success started. I basically, the way that it started was we ranked number one for invoice template. I was on my way to a team building event that was an escape room and I didn't even think too much about it, but I posted on uh, LinkedIn about how we achieved this milestone of ranking number one for invoice template. I thanked my teammates and just explained a little bit about what we did. And then, you know, I left that escape room and there was two messages in my inbox of people who wanted to hire me. And um, I signed both those clients and, you know, suddenly I was making more um, uh, from my SEO side hustle than I was in my day job. And, um, you know, I didn't quit right away. I, I stayed in my day job for about nine or 10 months after that. And I uh, just kept on building up the client roster, uh, you know, on the side, committing a lot of time um, after after work and late nights, um, early mornings, I would do I would do client meetings before I went into work. I would even do some meetings at work. Um, <laughs> I, I received a really good piece of advice as I was um uh, doing all this. And that was to not leave my job until it was costing me money to stay in my job. Um, oh, so that's a great tip. Wow. When I, when I finally left, I was, I literally had like so much business where if I said no to this business, or if I, if I stayed in my job, I would have to say no to this business. Right. So I had uh, nine or 10 months of savings in my in my bank account from all the side hustle. And then I had asked FreshBooks if I could leave and continue on as a consultant. Uh, and they did agree to that. So I worked with FreshBooks as a consultant for about a year and a half after I left as a full-time employee. Um, it was a very, it made for a very smooth transition and a very comfortable transition, especially due to the fact that I waited eight, nine or 10 months until I actually left. I and would you mind explaining one of the case studies that you, I mean, you've done so much case studies and for example, the one when you guys got 50,000 visitors per day on FreshBooks? Yeah, for sure. Um, I've got lots of case studies from my clients as well. Um, and a lot of the learnings that I have done at FreshBooks, I have also um, done like a second time for clients and actually improved on that process for, for multiple, in multiple ways. Uh, but at FreshBooks, the big, well, the, the 50,000 was not the driver of leads the way that the invoice templates were. We did get like, I don't know, hundreds of newsletter subscribers per day uh, with, with that content and also build our topical relevance and all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, topical authority, sorry. What we did was basically my boss um, came up to me and said, um, like we, we got a budget increase, um, cause we, we went and pitched to our executives that we wanted to get, um, uh, a budget increase to, um, you know, do, do more. And we got that budget increase. And then, um, my boss came up to me and said, um, Hey Steve, I need a thousand articles. And then he just like walked away and that was it. And, um, I, I was like, oh shit, like, how am I going to come up with like a thousand article topics for, you know, accounting, invoicing, entrepreneurship, stuff like that. And um, I said to myself, well, what about like the people also ask questions, right? The the ones on Google. It was a, a really great breakthrough to me at the time because nobody had been doing that. This is like 2018. People also ask, I think we're like fairly new at that time. We just mined thousands of those questions. And then we clustered them together. This was pre to uh, any tools like keyword cupid or any tools like that uh, we clustered them together and we came up with around 650 topics and that was good enough for my boss then we hired five writers um, to come into fresh books for three months to produce uh, those articles and then we shipped them probably four or five months later um, because it took a long time to upload and get images and all that kind of stuff. But basically those articles that achieved that $50,000, sorry, 50,000 visits per day 
were based on the people also ask questions. It was something that we weren't sure if it was even going to work. Um, you know, I asked people like, should we keep the titles of the blogs the same as the people also ask questions? And nobody had an answer for me. I just had to kind of follow my instincts and, and go for it. And then, yeah, a year later, that traffic number, you know, people at the company were just like, what happened here? <laughs> Like, what is going on? Like, what, why are, why is our analytics like exploding right now? And then we had to say, like, remember those five people who came in uh, in the fall of 2018 and wrote those articles? That's that's what produced that. Okay, so there are multiple things I love about this story because uh, you mentioned that you didn't, you had to trust your instincts, and a lot of marketers would overthink and then fall into like paralysis analysis and then eventually not do anything with it, uh, which is. Uh, like, I think it's really remarkable that you had to like trust yourself and then go ahead with this campaign, knowing that this is the amount of, that's the deadline, and that's, that's the amount of budget you got. Plus, you've also hired multiple people for this. It was just like, again, you know, um, a little bit of good pressure um, from my boss, um, that guy, Chris. You know, we had a great team around us too, right? Those five writers were all awesome. I trained them for a couple of weeks prior to writing any articles. And, um, you know, we looked at the outputs from them early on, gave them a lot of feedback. You know, it was the most, one of the most rewarding things to me about that was that um, two out of the five writers that we hired actually went on to get, um, to go into careers in SEO after that, because they just fell in love with it as well. Uh, that was super rewarding to me. One of them actually went to work for QuickBooks, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, that's not my problem anymore. Okay, cool. Awesome. We had another case study, um, you know, around uh, verticalizing that invoice template keyword um, across multiple industries. Um, so one of the things that I'm actually thinking about right now is like a positioning strategy for my own consulting is um, I've had a lot of success uh, with companies that target multiple industries. So with FreshBooks, they target things like graphic designers, freelance writers, lawyers, contractors, all people who use the invoice software. And uh, what we do is basically take um, like that keyword invoice template, and we create a page for invoice template for graphic designers, invoice template for contractors, invoice template for freelance writers, et cetera. And then we kind of like link them all together and we optimize all those pages and, uh, and we kind of create like an engine. And um, I've done this multiple times since. I've done this for indoor maps, contract uh, templates, various other finance. Uh, I, there's one that I do it for that I did it for, which I don't want to mention the niche because it's really lucrative. And I'm getting into yep. it. <laughs> there, there's we did it for multiple um, uh, clients since then, and you know it's been um, a really successful strategy. Each time I've done it. Um, I've improved on the process and uh, I feel super confident, right? So what I'm thinking about from my own positioning standpoint is just saying, does your business target multiple industries? I pretty much hit a home run every time I, I take on one of these strategies. And, uh, you know, to me, that's like my ideal um, client. It's like the most fun because like, I know that I know exactly what to do and uh, it's just a matter of executing it. So um, I was really fortunate uh, to learn how to perfect that uh, or even not like learn how to initially do it and then a refine it um, at FreshBooks and kind of carry that knowledge with me um, through to, you know, the different industries that I've worked on as a consultant. I would like to thank you for listening to this episode and please give us a review because all of the reviews mean so much for this starting podcast. If you like and enjoy the show or if you have any improvements, please let me know on Facebook or you can email me through my website. Now let's get back to the video. Well, I also asked you this question already, but like as an SEO consultant, you don't have to execute, like you don't execute anything, right? Like you give the strategy to the company and then they have an in-house team or how does it work? Yeah, so the main deliverable, I mean, we do have deliverables, but uh, the things that I don't do is I don't typically do the content writing for the client. Um, I don't upload, I don't create the pages, I don't really touch the website, but I will do things like create content briefs, 
um, you know, create the full strategy for all the titles and interlinking and URL structure and, you know, all those um, things that need, you know, um, an experienced person to kind of, uh, you know, formulate and delegate. Those are the kinds of things that I tend to focus on. The content briefs are very detailed um, and, you know, easy to follow, but there's a lot of um, care that goes into creating them. You know, we also do things like lately we um, did an image audit for the Google SGE, um, various things from the notes. Um, so we always have something to talk about uh, with with our clients, and um, I meet with them every two weeks, pretty much. But once the content that we recommend goes live, uh, we have our eyes on it and make you know continual improvements on things, and also there to answer any questions that my clients have. Um, usually over Slack uh, with most of them, some of them just through email. Okay, fantastic. Um, how do you find to work with your uh, clients? Do you work with a lot of CMOs? CMOs, uh, not so much as my direct point of contact. Uh, it's usually at the manager or the director level, uh, but I've definitely been hired by CMOs uh, in the mm -hmm. past. So it just kind of depends on the size of the company. In general, um, we, you know, we'll have the CMO join uh, the odd call, but it's not something that um, he or she, uh, you know, comes on a regular basis to to those meetings. Cool. Uh, is there anything like challenging as a consultant when you, uh, when they kind of don't understand SEO and that they're trying to force their ideas on you? Has that ever happened to you? Um. Not really. I mean, I have clients who will ask questions about, should we be doing this? Or, you know, I read this over here, but generally, you know, I'm experienced with this stuff. So it's not like uh, I have a hard time defending my um, convictions, right? So I would say it maybe at the beginning, sometimes uh, of a client relationship, um, there might be kind of like feeling out on both sides in terms of you know, the strategy and, and getting buy-in and all that stuff. But I find that, you know, once I'm a few months into working with a client, um, they really trust me. And um, the relationship is more about collaboration than being opposed on each side. And I choose my clients very carefully. Um, so I, you know, I only have um, really like positive relationships. Uh, and if, if it ever, um, you know, turns a different way, then um, I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I don't have to work with anybody I don't want to work with. I love that because uh, the reason why I asked you this question, because um, I know listeners, they might be still like looking for clients and then they not, might not know how to vet and um, kind of build a healthy relationship with clients too. Yeah. Um, I think so, you have to trust your instincts, yeah. you know, like looking at um, how a person contacts you, how they um, approach uh, meetings, how they approach the negotiation process. Um, there's a lot of different like cues and things that you can um, look for uh, in, in that sales process that um, will give you uh, indication of what it's going to be like to work with that, with that company. And uh, I realized that you know, starting out in your journey, if you don't have any clients, your standards are going to be different. And that's perfectly okay. My standards were also different uh, when I started, but I was lucky enough to get some really solid clients um, early on. And, um, you know, very fortunate to uh, have the opportunities that I've had um, to, you know, make material differences in, you know, all these businesses that I've worked with. Awesome. Awesome. And lastly, is there any like final advice that you would love to give for? people who are just starting out their own uh, projects or they want to be an aspiring CMO? Yeah, having something that you worked on that represents you, um, you know, for me, that was SEO Notebook. It was also largely um, FreshBooks as a uh, case study for me. Um, something to give you confidence, something to give you uh, to add to your own story, right? Because like, um, you know, we're just humans, like, you know, all connected via social networks or, you know, Zoom or via email. Like, we're just like, we have these perceptions of like, you know, who you are, you have a perception of who I am. 
and of course those things you know there's lots of details that we you know have like you know of who we are that um we don't you know talk about publicly but um we we do have our own stories that that we uh that that create you know who we are and um really developing your own story uh you know with where you came from what you're passionate about um how you like to do the thing that you do um you know what are your sort of philosophies that you stick to um and really just developing your own story and you know for me people knew that i worked at fresh books they knew that i had seo notebook um now they know that i have seo irl um those are the the things that you know i um actively worked on to um you know be part of my story and I didn't like only create it to become part of my story. I did it because I wanted to do that and I had fun doing it. But I think um, to a large degree, we have to try to stand out with each other. And, you know, when you're on social media and you're not saying anything and you're not, you know, creating a narrative of, uh, of who you um, are and who you aspire to be, it's, it's very difficult for people to also understand, you know, that part of you, right? So working on that, but also a large thing there is like, you know, what can you create that, you know, is going to be part of your identity, right? For you, Annie, you're just starting this podcast, the, the aspiring CMO. And I think for you that, you know, if you do it more and more and you continue this, that's a big part of who you will, you want to be in like your story, right? So I encourage everybody to try and find um, something like that that they can walk away and be proud of and be known for and uh you know then it's just a matter of doing consistency consistently uh once you have um you know a fan base or like you know people who who consume your content i love that thank you so much steve and if people would love to connect with you how can they find you uh, the best place, probably seonotebook.com and just subscribing to the email list. Um, but also uh, LinkedIn is probably my favorite social network. You can search Steve Toth SEO and I'm sure you'll find me. Yes, I will also link it down in the show notes. So really, I'm really super thankful for you to join my podcast. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I hope to see you at me. Chiang Mai. Yeah, best of, yeah, for sure. I'll see you at Chiang Mai, no doubt. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thanks for having me and um, all the best with this podcast. I think, you know, there's a, it's a great name and a great idea and, uh, you know, just keep it up. And I'm, I'm really honored to be one of your first guests. Thank you. Thank you so much. It really made my day. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks. Take care.